one of the most talked about politicians in Maharashtra today is a first time MLA Pankaja Munde, the daughter of Union Minister Gopinath Munde, who died tragically recently. Endorsements by no less than the Prime Minister and the party president Amit Shah have made her grab national headlines, leading to much speculation as to whether she could emerge as a chief ministerial contender. Joining me now on her busy campaign trail is Pankaja Munde herself. Hello. Pleasure to be talking to you, Pankaja. Let me start by asking you, did you ever think before your father's very tragic death that your life would be what it is today, that you'd be sharing the stage with the prime minister, with the party president, with senior leaders? Did you, did you ever think this moment, in a sense, would happen for you? <clears throat> I never thought about all this, but uh, I was sharing a uh, stage with Prime Minister on the second line. Now I have shifted to first line next to him. Mm -hmm. So that has happened very fast in my yeah. life. But with, of course, a very tragic reason behind yes, it. Yes. So somehow I didn't get that chance to think about it. Mm -hmm. I was just flowing. How much of this campaign then is about your father? There are those who will say that actually it's a vote for Gopinath Munde because they don't know you right now. They will say it's a sympathy vote, it's a sympathy wave. How do you respond to See, that? There is a big, huge sympathy wave. I should not deny it because he was such a big leader. A lot of people thought he is their support, he's their life. A lot of people used to have his photograph in their uh, mandir at home. So, of course, there is a big, huge sympathy wave. But um, uh, it, is, it is not a first time I'm traveling all over Maharashtra. Maybe I grabbed all the attention now hmm. of the national media. I was a star campaigner in parliament election also. But let me ask you, one of the reasons that you grab national headlines is also, of course, the fact that the senior most leaders of your party have, uh, have, in a sense, spoken of a larger state role for you, not just restricting you to your constituency. Amit Shah only uh, even went so far as to say that the entire OBC community should unite under you. I want to ask you as a young leader, do you believe that caste should still be the kind of factor it is in today's elections? I don't believe in casteism, but I do believe where you are belong, you belong to where you are born, uh, with the kind of background you are born in, you should, you have that kind of thread attached to that community or the mm. caste. So you should not, you can't break it. Mm. That is your real mm. identity. So if you are born in a backward class, it is your duty to give the upliftment to the society. So of course they relate to you, they, they fall back on you, they, they kind of look, look up to you. Mm. So you cannot just deny them once you reach somewhere mm. saying that, no, I don't believe in casteism anymore. I don't believe in casteism. But I know there is a backward class mm. all over uh, nationally mm. and they should, they should be the, uh, the people who should come in uh, so like to that so mainstream to the, in future. So to that extent, would you ask for name uh, for, for, for votes in the name of your caste? No, I would never do that. I've never done that before. Why not? Because a lot of politicians no, do that. They do organize support along caste no, lines. No, I will not do that. And Maharashtra politics doesn't support that kind of uh, attitude. We never did in Maharashtra. Not big leaders do that. Not uh, my father never did that. I'll never ask votes for my caste. Of course, I will be recognized by my caste, I will be loved by my caste, yeah. but I will not ask, vote for caste. So when your party president, Amit Shah, speaks about the, commu the OBC community uniting under your, your leadership, how do, you see, how do you see that statement? Because a number of people feel that your projection today is also about eyeing that vote bank. He was not asking for votes there. He was saying the community should, um, because after Munde Saab, com community should not feel that they are leaderless or they don't have someone to look after them because Munde Saab of attached lakhs and lakhs of people to BJP in the last 30 years mm. and they were uh, that that was the kind of our confirmed vote after his death they all started thinking that they are they don't have a leader or they started getting detached from the party or started getting detached from politics rather mm. so that is what he said that after Munde Saab we'll look after whatever you want Pankaja will be the leading face that he didn't want to uh, kind of motivate uh, votes in that manner. But you know when he when he was with you and even when the Prime Minister was was with you campaigning they were there was a clamor in the crowds for you to be in a sense named the chief ministerial candidate or to be the chief minister of the BJP so it's quite extraordinary that a, f a first time MLA uh, should be spoken about as a potential chief minister. See it was happening no, in normal scenario I would have felt very happy and very content very proud of it maybe mm. but now I'm really not thinking on those lines 
they look at me as substitute of my dad hmm. they look at me as okay if munde sahab is not there she will be the one who will lead us she will be the one who will take care of us so because munde sahab was definitely a cm candidate for bjp they look at me in that manner but the way i have traveled all over the state has given the rise to the campaign also hmm. and i won't say that's the only reason so of course people say okay she is the one who is campaigning all over the maharashtra and kind of taking those people uh, back to the uh, party mm. so um, they they all expect me to be take that uh, role so it's my honor in a way mm. but um, it's a big responsibility i don't know i never aspired to be cm in this case you're right in saying that had your father been alive he would certainly have been the chief ministerial candidate i think we all know that now now that he died so tragically do you believe or do, do your supporters believe or do his supporters believe that in a sense that post if it if it comes to the bjp should rightfully come to you they must be thinking on those lines that's why they 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 said see, it, my yeah. my followers mostly are from 18 to 25 mm. there's so much of energy that you cannot control them beyond a point so whenever my leaders come i all very slowly whisper please excuse me for the way they behave because sometimes youth you cannot mm-hmm. control mm. so the way they react or they, the way they express their demands is there but you know i i don't really aspire to be cm right now but if my party or my people think that i should not deny it or just reject it it will be disrespecting their you know their demands or their wishes or their hopes so i would not d- reject them but i will never ask for anything for the party but as also. your father's daughter do you see this post as rightfully yours not yeah see yeah, no not only as my father's daughter if i was only my father's daughter i would have not controlled this crowd ever mm. if mm. i i was their leader anyways mm. but only thing i was their leader a leader's daughter i was leading them for last 10 years i'm working 7 years i'm full fledgedly working so that's why it's only only i take my mic and i talk and i say no calm down control they will mm-hmm. not listen to me mm. they had those threats attached to me they were they were having a bond with me for years but after that my responsibility responsibility has really gone up your dad was among those who really stitched together the alliance with the shiv sena 25 year old alliance that has broken is that strange for you that today the shiv sena is so openly attacking the bjp the campaign is very in a sense vitriolic it's very aggressive they even attacking the prime minister the shiv sena hasn't put up a candidate against you because of the old association with your father but is it strange for you that this alliance is broken yeah of course it is it is strange for me that we are going in public meetings and talking she said na talking about bjp yes for years i am actually rather my life i have brought up being seeing these we leaders together on the ice and talking about progress of maharashtra so it is strange for me but it is a different generation now there was a generation of bala saab thakre munde saab mahad pramod ji mahajan they they came together mm. and formed this alliance so they gave birth to a new uh, the thought process in those days the 80s the that decade mm-hmm. so now new generation has arisen uddhav ji is there we are there mm. so maybe we we want to try something and we really tried our best my leaders my central leaders my state leaders never wanted to break this alliance we tried our best till the last moment but that was the last day of nomination we had to come to some level and settle the matter but we could not come to that particular satisfactory level of discussions so that and we had four more uh, parties with us to accommodate mm-hmm. and they were there for parliamentary election we could not do injustice to them so the whole thing came up and we decided one day mm-hmm. one moment and it was painful for us also but could this change after the elections because if the bjp is short of a majority you have to either seek the support of the sena again or of sharad pawar or of raj thakre depending on how he performs i would like my party to come with a clear thumping majority we are trying our best mm-hmm. to reach there But that's, not, is, but that's not realistic. We are working on unrealistic levels to do that, realistic, mm. make it realistic. So I would like to ha- that to happen. If not, we we will think later on. We will think how our leaders will guide us. We will go ahead. But do you see a patch up with the Sena as possible? See if if we are less uh, for majority, all the options are open. So why not Shiv Sena? Sharad Pawar made a statement that they would not field a candidate against your family in the, in the Lok Sabha elections but they haven't followed that in the assembly elections you're actually up against one of your own cousins so how do you see that move by the NCP to say okay Lok Sabha we won't field a candidate but in the assemblies we will 
See, I don't even think about it much because they did not file any nomination against Lok Sabha candidate. But uh, there is a Congress candidate supported by all the NCP local leaders there. Mm. So ultimately what they had to do, they have done. Yeah. Secondly, they have filed a nomination against me in my constituency who is my cousin. But yeah. we actually separated five years ago. He was in NCP for five years. Yeah. So it was not some sudden shock for me. Mm. But uh, he is already a MLC. Mm. So he he's contesting just to kind of threaten me there or you know kind of get me stuck there. Otherwise he is having an MLC uh, seat in uh, NCP. So there was no reason for him to get into this election. Uh, if Udhavji is not giving seat against me, if all the allies are supportive to me because of Munde Saab. So this was expected of course by people from the family members. But I didn't expect anything. It didn't come as a shock to me. Now, you've spoken about being a, a new generation of leaders. Now, while the young part of it is good, there will be some criticism that, in a sense, you're all inheritors of politics. You will be called dynasts. You'll be, it'll be said this is another example of dynastic politics. Your sister is also now in politics. How do you respond to this charge that you are essentially political dynasts? When I came in politics, when I filed my nomination five years ago, I answered all these questions. Hmm. That okay, I got this because my dad ordered me to get yeah. into this. Because that was the only possibility we could have won the seat. So that was need of that particular place. They asked me to file nomination. Hmm. It was by public demand. I did not want to get hmm. into politics. Hmm. But once I got into it, I decided that I will not be under only shadow of my dad. And I started spreading my roots un under hmm. the ground. And I so you really don't just see yourself as your father's daughter. You see yourself I as more I love to see myself by... Not only as that. See, even if that is the identity, I should not deny it. That is my identity. But the way I work, it's only because I'm my father's daughter. It's only been three months, my father is no more. And people don't get out of these kind of shocks and sorrows for years. It's only him yeah. who made me so strong to get back to my duties. And that's why I don't mind getting only known by his daughter. But my sister is again accidentally in politics. She didn't want to be in politics, but my district demanded. It's only been 15 days. Uh, my father died after results of Lok Sabha. Yeah. And it was a big uh, sympathy wave there in my district. All the Karikartas said that we don't want anyone to take that place un unless you take it up. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to go in the center politics. So I said, why didn't why? you want to go to the center? See, I was very much comfortable in state politics. I would, if this election would have happened maybe a month ago, I would have really thought of it. My district is a uh, very hardcore NCP uh, thing. All MLAs are there, yeah. all MLCs are like 11 people and two ministers I'm fighting yeah. against. So uh, there, if I am fighting assembly, I will be able to take care of all these people. If I was in Lok Sabha, I would not be able to push this election to some level. So I am always doing that to get into proper real hardcore low, lower level politics. So they asked um, someone to find nomination from my, my own family. So my mother is not yet out of her shock. So she's not able to get taken to it. So I had to give it to my sister. And it was by again public demand how it happened five years ago with me. Now you're, you're, you know, you're campaigning as you said so soon after your father's death. The CBI probed the death, we believe the report is out and it doesn't suspect foul play. Is the family, is the family convinced uh, of that finally? See, I have not read the report of CBI yet. I heard yesterday when oh. I was campaigning that it is, uh, the report is out and it's coming in the news. Yes. So if they are saying it's not a foul play, I don't want to ma make my father's death as a mat as a matter of attention mm. or mat just to make it a sympathy thing. I just want to believe whatever happened. Mm. It is very difficult for me to believe there is a foul play also. I pray that it should be really something An natural, accident. normal. Mm. Because it is not something difficult, some, not something easy for a family to accept. But if the report is out and if they are saying there is no foul play, I should believe in it. I should not make it as an issue. For me to get, get somewhere, it is not right on my part or my people's part. Yeah. May, they may not believe in this report, but it is, I will have to, I'll take some time to cool them down. And they all their life, they may, they will feel that there is a foul play. So let me ask you a last question. As a woman in politics, there's also talk, oh, you could be the first woman chief minister. Has it been difficult as a new politician, as a woman, as a, as a parent, has it been difficult to juggle politics with the rest of life? 
No, it will not be because uh, I am in politics since last five years actively, no, last ten years uh, from a distance. But I always felt that I am a born politician, which I didn't realize for years. Mm. So it is not difficult for me to get into this role. I have done it till now right, quite successfully, and I cannot let these people go. Hey, why I have responsibility of lakhs and lakhs of people. I just can't deny that. That makes me more determined. grounded and more determined to be in politics. Well, you've grabbed national attention. Pankaja Munde, thank you so much for talking to us.